So okay, let's see. Today's discussion is the discriminant, and we have written the quadratic formula. The discriminant is part of the quadratic formula. It's the stuff drawn gigantic. Let's let's take it out of there and let's just write it down so people can understand. B squared minus four AC, not the square root part, is the discriminant. So we're going to look at random examples, and we're going to look at what the discriminant is in the random example. Take a look. The discriminant is part of the quadratic formula. What kind of number is this underneath the square root? It's a perfect square. So, so some stuff under. So the number underneath the, the square root is a perfect square. Now, what happens? What kind of roots are we going to get? Well, is it negative or is it positive? So therefore, the roots have to be real. And now you say to yourself, self. Does this reduce and simplify so that is the, so that there is a square root or not? There is no square root. It reduces down to being just pure 9. So what kind of numbers are we going to get? Rational or irrational? Rational. Rational. Now, the another thing you have to say to yourself, you say to yourself, what? Self? Self, am I adding or subtracting stuff? I am adding or subtracting 9. For, to 2. So will it produce 1 or 2 roots? 2 roots. So therefore, we have unequal roots. So you just follow, just hang in with me. We've got to do three more examples of this. Okay. So, so now, a completely different example. We have 0 underneath the square root. So, so let's write this down. So now there's 0 in for the discriminant spot. And what kind of roots are we going to get? Well, it's not negative, is it? So therefore, the roots have to be what? Good. Whoops. Hold on. The second thing is, is does the square root go away when you simplify it? Yes. The square root of 0 is what? Zero. 0. So therefore, we're going to have some rational roots. And the third part is, is like, okay, so, so you have zero over here. Are you adding or subtracting anything? In this spot right here, when you get done, you're not going to be adding or subtracting anything. So therefore, only one root is created, 5 divided by 14. So the last part is how many roots? We have one, and they're going to be equal. Good to go? Ready? So this is, a, this is a really important part. Guys, give me a number that if you saw, you got underneath the square root, you would think you were screwed. Ne can't be negative. Got to be something that would freak you out. 47, 5, give me some. OK, OK. So which one do you want me to choose? 5, give me a random one. Like 5, OK, I'll deal with 5. Suppose you do all your work. You get 5 underneath the square root. Oh my god. First of all, you're freaking out. You're like, I did something wrong. I'm going to fail. You're not going to fail. Don't worry. Five. What kind of number is five? Is it a perfect square or not? Not a perfect square. Whoops. Not a perfect square. OK, that's important, right? Now, is it positive? Tell me what kind of roots we got. Is it real or imaginary? Real, man. Real, because, because the, the only thing that tells you whether you have real roots or imaginary roots is whether it's positive. So it's positive, so it's real. But that 5, right, makes it what? Rational or irrational? Because when you try and simplify this, if you cannot get rid of that square root, you're screwed. Irrational. That's how you have to think. And then, well, well, we're going to have to be plusing and minus something, so, so unequal. Mr. Hershey, they're very smart, right? OK, so, so last and final example, we got a negative underneath the square root. Oh my god, negative number. Oops. Did I spell that right? That looks horrible. But I just don't want to. I just don't want to have to erase it. Negative number. Okay, straight off the bat, you see a negative number. You only have to answer with one word. What are you going to say? Imaginary. Yeah, of course you are. Imaginary. Just like all my friends. 
I think that I think I think I actually recorded that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Guys, so so part one. So now we're gonna do some practice problems, right? Find the discriminant and use it to describe the roots. I think the first step we gotta do is list out A, B, and C. What's A? What's B? What's C? Okay, that's that's brilliant. Take a guess at what you're going to do. Thank you. All you're going to do is plug in. Okay. So so after we do this work, then we get 25. Guys, what kind of number is 25? Ooh, 25 is a perfect square. So now you know what the discriminant is. Could you tell me what the roots are like? So real rational because when you stick 25 inside the square root right it simplifies and are we going to get equal or unequal roots unequal unequal because think of it you're going to be plusing or minusing something from the quadratic equation here we go part two you got to determine from a picture if the discriminant is less than zero if it's greater than zero or if it equals zero oh yeah so here we go. The first one, it doesn't touch. Do you see? So what kind of roots do we have? Imaginary roots, which means the stuff underneath the radical has to be what? Negative, which means the discriminant has to be negative. Ooh, we are good at this. We are real good at this. The second one, how many roots do we have? So the roots are equal. So that means we must have not had to plus or minus anything, which means the discriminant is what? Whoa, the discriminant is which one of these choices? Two. It means the stuff underneath the square root had to have been zero because we only got one root. And finally, the last one, you see it hits twice. So what, what's the last answer have to be? It's got to be which one of these choices? Greater than zero. What's up? Okay. In the problem. Okay. So, so, so part three, part three, we're going to find the value of C. We're going to find the value of the equation such that, you know, A, the roots are equal and rational. And then B, C, and D we're going to do on Monday. So we're just going to do A for right now. And we're going to write it in red. Okay, so, so, so like, let's clarify. It looks like a really confusing question. And that's one of the things I've said is so stupid about this class, right? Questions are real easy. They just look real confusing. Guys, what are A, B, and C in this particular case? 1, 2N, a big fat question mark. We don't know, because C is that last number. We don't know what it is. It's just C for right now. So check this out, right? Check this out. If the roots are equal, <clears throat> sorry, I got something caught in my throat. If they're equal, what do you know about the stuff underneath the square root? What's it got to be? Oh, zero. It's got to be zero. And that means that B squared minus 4AC has to be equal to zero. And so guess what you got to do? Just plug it in, plug it in. You're right. We don't know what C is. Doesn't matter. Check this out. Ooh, you guys are so smart. Yeah, you you probably didn't even need to solve this. You could have just figured it out. Right? We got negative 4C equals negative 4. Divide by negative 4. Divide by negative 4. And then C equals 1. How easy, right? Easy, piece of cake. 